Hello and welcome to the second part of my Supergirl inspired heat vision effect. And I say Supergirl inspired because the heat vision is blue. <laughs> now if you haven't watched part one, I would recommend that you click the link in the description below because this video won't make any sense otherwise. Anyway, so here we are in part two. We've already done the main thing. Now this video is just to add in, add in all the fun stuff, which honestly it shouldn't be that hard. For you guys to do because this is essentially just adding in all the the stock footage effect like the smoke and some sparks and all that fun stuff so we're going to begin here at the start of me shooting my my heat vision it's like four frames before my second second <laughs> because this is where i want to add some sparks to make the effect look a bit more dangerous like my eyes are just like bang sparks heat vision so i'm gonna grab this firecracker from video copilot every form of stock footage like smoke is going to be below the actual like beams you know laser beams and heat, heat vision beams <laughs> because if you add all the effects above the heat vision it's gonna really mess up the color and all that so yeah it's better to have it below so now we have this firecracker of course it's not long enough so I'm gonna drag it here to where it is here we are now we have this wonderful firecracker and I'm gonna grab this to my eye I'm gonna scale it down normally I probably wouldn't have it this big but just for this tutorial <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have it this big just because it's one eye you know I'm gonna change it to scene just to get a bit more like light to it and then I'm gonna use a Gaussian blur I think does he pronounce it because I want it to be a bit blurry it's way too sharp right now so now that that's done we've essentially already finished with the first thing you know we've added in some sparks for when I'm shooting out my heat vision I have another fire spark like footage this time and this one lasts a bit longer you can also find similar effects to these in action essentials or you can try and google around for free stock footage of sparks and all that if in case you guys don't have, have any money of course if you have money then you can search for as many paid stock footage as you want <laughs> I'm going to add in a mask here because I don't want the edge to be there because that's gonna mess up everything and then I'm going to change it from normal to screen so that the black disappears and maybe 50 opacity because we don't want the sparks to just like disappear into into the edge of the mask so now not only do we have some wonderful firecrackers we also have some sparks as well and these of course shouldn't appear before my heat vision is out so i'm going to change the opacity on them by pressing t on the keyboard and click the stopwatch to set zero maybe like this and then i'm going to go a few frames forward to when my heat vision is fully out and then i'm going to press 100 yeah so now my eye is also emitting some lovely little little sparks just to make everything look a bit more dangerous of course of, of, i realize now that i have to track it because <laughs> i didn't put in the tracker so i want to have the the laser track because that's just a simple like translate 2d track so here we are now we've added some 2d elements some 2d spark in my actual video you could see spark on the actual like heat vision beam so i'm just going to take these from my original script it's a pre-comp layer that i named violent particles so i'm going to grab it in here to my tutorial script and here we can see here we can see the sparks of course i'm going to have to place them a bit differently <laughs> So now I have these violent particles and I made these sparks here with particular which is also a plugin that not everyone have but if you have particular yeah sure you can create the, this violent particles I'm not gonna do a tutorial of how to do them in particular because then this video is going to be even longer all I search for to figure out how to do this I just sort of search for like Kylo Ren's lightsaber after effects tutorial that's literally what I search for and then I you know thanks to tutorials on YouTube I figured out how to do it so just search for Tyler Ren's lightsaber if you want to do some violent particles after the sparks it's time to add in the smoke and this will be a very similar process to adding in the, the sparks as it is with smoke I'm gonna grab this smoke footage here that is also from action essentials so there and I'm just playing around at like what direction I want it to be in I feel like it's going down a bit too much so I'm gonna continue just to to, to fix some things to put it in in place where I want it to be so I feel like this will work okay yeah now I'm gonna press G on the keyboard to create a mask and I'm gonna create a mask around it because uh, again I don't want it to be to be cut you know I don't want to have this like sharp line so instead I'm gonna do this maybe 50 uh, no, I'm gonna change that to maybe 70 and yeah sure nope never mind change it to 100 <laughs> And I'm gonna add in the tracker, of course, so that it matches. Then I'm gonna duplicate the layer and drag it forward. 
So now it looks like the smoke is is way longer than it actually is. And I'm also gonna drag the footage down here a bit so that the smoke moves differently than the other smoke layer because we don't want them to, to be moving exactly the same otherwise everything is going to look uh, quite bad. <laughs> and I'm gonna change the opacity on both of them to 60 so that they're not like super duper visible. And so now that we have the smoke layers here, they're tracked, everything, it all would be perfect, but the smoke isn't supposed to be here until the heat vision is here. So I'm back at my second second and I'm gonna press the stopwatches on my opacity and then we're gonna go to uh, to the start here so just a few frames back something like this and then we're gonna change them all to zero and now the smoke shouldn't start before the actual heat vision so this won't work I'm gonna actually like go into my to my mask path here which you can access by pressing M on the keyboard and I'm gonna go forward here and then press the stopwatches for the mask path and then basically I'm just going to drag this in and now I'm creating this form of animation of the smoke like coming forward together with the, with the heat vision and there now we've created a mask path for both of these and so now the smoke should be good to go again if you want to do this effect it's all up to you of when you want the smoke to appear how fast how slowly how fast you want it to be moving that's you know it's very much all up to, to you yourself your own personal feelings about it i'm gonna add in a similar effect to to my firecracker here and that's a that's a wisp again from action essentials and this is essentially just like a a smoke puff there you can see how it looks i'm gonna place it here uh, behind actually it's in forward now so I'm gonna place it behind my 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 firecracker layer and then I'm gonna change opacity to 70 take away some of the frames because I wanted to start with it already being out and then of course behind my firecracker I've just created this fast like opacity shift here so that it's zero before and then suddenly it's already 70 and then for the first time in this <laughs> video here I'm going to right click this layer I'm gonna go into time and then time stretch and then I'm gonna change it from 100 to 60 and what that does is simply that it's now moving way faster than it did before because this wisp layer is fairly slow so so now you can see me rotating it a bit moving it around and I'm gonna change the opacity from 70 to 60 and I once again just gonna take a quick look at everything see how everything looks Ooh, sparks and smoke and all that now that I'm actually like reviewing the footage I'm realizing that I want the smoke to be just a bit smaller it's I feel like it's maybe a bit too big now which is why I'm just like <laughs> sloppily changing the width of it <laughs> and I also feel like I want to add in some color to the smoke it feels just a it feels too white so I'm gonna add in a color vibrance before I do that I want to save it and then I'm gonna go into turbulent and just copy this VC color vibrance take it into smoke and let's see how, how it looks with with the vibrance Ooh, it looks it looks very dark so I might have to change it from normal to screen yeah there we go and now it's maybe it's a bit too blue so I'm gonna change the values here a bit of the brightness and gamma and yeah basically change the values here of everything just to make it a bit more visible and there I think we have it I like the look of that so I'm gonna copy paste it to my other shirt and now and change this to screen as well and now we have some a bit more of a bluish tint to the otherwise very gray and white smoke and i feel like that works just a bit better and now after having added in all of the stock footage element to make everything look a bit more a bit more lively we get to to one of the the, the more final parts of actually doing the effect and that is adding in some color for starters I want to duplicate my feather here I'm gonna add in some Gaussian blur if that's how you pronounce it change it from 0 to 200 and then I'm gonna press T to open up opacity change it from 100 to 80 to make it less just a bit less visible and now suddenly we have an even bigger glow because I felt like my heat vision just wasn't glowy enough I'm gonna add in some curves to add some blue color to it and that's going to be a slightly like subtle change well, maybe something like this it just feels feels just yeah it just feels like a bit more blue I like that so I'm gonna keep that and after that's done I'm gonna create a new new solid because I'm about to make another uh, lens flare so I'm gonna add into optical flares options and this time I want to create like like a lot bigger optical flare because this is intended to be at the end of my heat vision 
to add in a lot more of a bluish color to the entire, entire shot. Change from normal to screen, and then boom, very, very blue. And I'm gonna just get it to it's here back at the end. Change it back a bit. Maybe change the brightness to 90 so it's not like overwhelmingly bright. And there you go. Now it looks like I'm, I'm shooting towards something. After that's done, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer this time. I'm going to create a mask using the pen tool or press G on the keyboard. Just around the heat vision. And then I'm going to feather it to 200. And I'm going to write curves and I'm going to add in some even more, more blue and more contrast to it. Make everything look blue. I'm mainly doing this because I feel like the actual beam might have become a bit too white. Even in my original main shot, I felt like the heat vision beam was maybe a bit too white. And this is why I'm adding in all of these more bluer effects to make everything look a bit more super girly blue. So now I'm going to create a new solid. And this is going to be, again, a blue solid. Yeah, that can work. And then I'm going to use the pen tool or press G on the keyboard to create a mask that's going to be somewhere around where I'm shooting my heat vision. And then I'm going to feather it a lot by 200, no 300 this time, like that. And then T for opacity and change it from 100 to 5. And the purpose of this is just to create a bit more of a bluish, bluish tint to the shot around where my heat vision is. And now I'm gonna add in some lens dirt. You see, whenever Supergirl shoots her heat vision, you always see a bunch of, like, lens dirt on the lens to signify, like, oh, look how bright everything is. And so I have a, a footage of, like, a lens dirt and, like, a, almost like a bokeh effect uh, element here that I found on Google. I literally searched for lens dirt, <laughs> and this is one of the images that popped up. So um, here I'm feathering it a lot, 200. Uh, and then I'm going to change this to 300 because I want even more feather. And then I'm going to change this to screen to get rid of the get rid of the blacks. Now, of course, it's a bit too bright almost. I'm going to change the opacity from 100 to 60 to 50. Nope, 60. <laughs> and then we're going to add in some curves just up it a bit. And then we're going to drag it down to get some more contrast and more some more gamma to it. And there you go, now it looks like the bright light is actually affecting the, the lens, like showing the dirt and all that, yes. I'm realizing now, of course, that I haven't tracked any of these effects, which I have to do. So I'm gonna go back to where I actually used the effect, which wasn't on my second second, that, that was bad of me. Try to do all of your effects on, on the frame that you want everything to be, because otherwise you can mess up when you're trying to add in, uh, you know, parent the trackers and all that. And then, of course, I need to create the actual... Uh, opacity animation here because all of these lights they shouldn't be visible now before my heat vision is out. There we go. Here we go. Turn stopwatch zero zero zero. Opacity. Missed the lens there, so opacity and oh oh I realized now that I forgot to even press in the stopwatch. This is why pressing the stopwatch is important. <laughs> I hope it actually is a stopwatch because that's what I've been calling it. There we go. Now I'm pressing it <laughs> from one from zero to one hundred. Yes, and there we go. Now there's no light effects until I'm shooting out my heat heat vision. Now you're gonna wanna customize these yourself. You know, like how you want it to be because this might not look you know correctly right. That is just an opacity. You might have to do some some masking to it so that all of the lights are not just like a simple fade in. Now I'm just doing some very quick adjustment to change the opacities and all that. Make it look a bit more natural. I'm gonna drag in this layer here. You're realizing that I didn't click mask path, so now I'm clicking mask path again. Going back and now I have to drag this out. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So now I have like a more of a forward animation for 
this color change here. And now this is going to surprise you all, but it is essentially done now. My effect is complete. Of course, it's not actually, you know, it's not fully complete. The original time I made my version of this effect, uh, it took me around three to four hours and all of that is in the details. You know, you want it to be as detailed as possible. Now I've tried to go through this as quickly as possible. So it's not going to be super detailed. You know, it's all about your own personal things also, how you want it to look yourself. And now I want to add in some final color correction, some final grading. And instead of doing that myself, I'm just going to go back to my original comp here and I'm going to copy these final layers here and I'm just gonna go through what is in my final grade layer so I have some curves I have some brightness and contrast and I have a transform this is how it looks with with my curves you know I really like try to try to change it because again I wanna you know I wanna bring the blue forward you know again this thing here is completely personal and it's all up to you because I don't know how you want your grading and how your color correction to be well, and then of course I have a transform effect. Why do I have a transform? Well, I'm adding in a, a letterbox here to make it look a bit more cinematic, which is why I use the transform to move myself up a bit into the shot. But yeah, no, here we are. And as you can see, I do think that they are similar. They're not the same, of course, which, you know, it's never going to be exactly the same. I feel like the main difference is my eye, you know, uh, in, in my tutorial version here, it's a lot more subdued, while in my in my, in my shot version, in, in my original actual shot, it's a, bit, it's a lot more like orange and a lot more pronounced than it is. But again, it's all down to personal taste. But yeah, this is how I essentially went down to make my Supergirl inspired heat vision effect. And here you can see it in action. And hopefully I haven't missed anything because I feel like I'm pretty much done now. If you're wondering about why why everything is getting a bit darker before I'm shooting my heat vision, my, my color correction and my final grading, that's all tied to my original shot. So when I copy that over, of, of course, you know, it's gonna get <laughs> darker a bit earlier than is intended because my heat vision and my original shot, it just, it goes out like a few frames earlier than it does here. I'm only using the second second because I felt like that was easier for you to, to see you know because you can actually see it on, on, on screen a bit easier um, okay no I feel like I, I'm, I'm gonna go another way if you, again if you have any questions just write them in the comment section I'll try to answer them as best as I can and if you have and if you have maybe like a request of an effect you want me to tackle next that would be awesome for you to write that in the comments also I'm gonna go now though but I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys whenever I see you guys next and and heat vision Ooh.